In your headlines, police are investigating a missing persons report after the individual was discovered dead in a shallow grave. And new information on the latest inflation stimulus has been released. Hello Turks and Caicos, welcome to PTV News Watch. Thanks for tuning in on this Monday, August 8th, 2022. I'm Kalise Williams with today's newscast. The real news starts now. Police are investigating a missing persons report after the 33-year-old was discovered dead in a shallow grave in the bite. Here's what officials have released of that case thus far. Police say 32-year-old Eder Etienne was reported missing on July 28th and on August 7th, just 10 days later, he is believed to be deceased. On Friday the 5th of August 2022, a report was made to the Royal Turks and Caicos Islands Police Force of a missing 33-year-old man named as Eder Etienne, who had been missing since the 28th of July 2022. Whilst this matter was initially dealt with as a missing person inquiry, officers quickly became concerned that Ida had come to harm and a larger investigation was launched, led by the Force Serious Crimes Unit, to locate Ida and establish what had happened to him. Police say an appeal for information was sent over social media and as a result, information was received that led to his discovery. I'm sad to report that this afternoon, A body of a man was found in a shallow grave in the Kingston area. And whilst formal identification has not taken place, we believe this to be the body of Ida. A next of kin has been notified. Police have also identified a person of interest in their investigation. I'm also able to update the man, who I'm naming as Keneal Doveril, has been arrested today for being in possession of a firearm and ammunition. Camille Deverill is also a person of interest into the investigation into the disappearance of Ida. At this point, he has not been charged with any offences, but he remains in custody. Officials say they believe other persons may be involved in ETN's disappearance, though not largely involved in his actual murder. No information was released on the victim's manner of death. New information released on the collection of the latest inflation stimulus and Newswatch has all the details for you days ahead of the commencement of the distribution process. Here's more. Officials say in order to ease congestion at the Providenciali sub-treasury, the latest stimulus inflation will be distributed in a batch system. The system is as follows. Senior citizens over the age of 60 who are traveling within 24 hours from the start of the distribution process will be given preference. The remaining checks for Provo will thereafter be distributed by the applicant's first name on the following dates. Applicants whose first name begin with the letters A through C will collect on August 10th. Applicants whose first name begin with C to I on August 11th. First names J to L on August 12th, M to R on August 13th, and applicants whose first name begin with S through Z on August 15th. Remember to walk with a valid Turks and Caicos Islands government-issued photo ID. This could take the form of a driver's license, NIB card, NHIP card, BOTC passport, or TCI status card. Your application number, and for those traveling abroad, an itinerary must be presented. Officials say those who are disabled or confined to their homes in the islands, of course, will be provided a check delivery service by their Island Treasury. Approved applicants are asked to make a written request for that delivery at tciassistance at gov.tc. This request must include a copy of the approved applicant's ID, application number, phone number, and delivery address. Be reminded that checks will not be assigned to banks or released to anyone other than the approved applicant. In observance of World Breastfeeding Week, CARPA published a press release in support of breastfeeding as a long-term strategy for a more productive and healthy region. Newswatch has more. In a press release on the 3rd of August, it was stated that Dr. Joy St. John, Executive Director at CARPA, said that six months of breastfeeding is beneficial to the infant, 
mother, family, and environment on a whole. Therefore, it is seen as an effective strategy in gaining regional and global goals on health, nutrition, food security, environmental stability, and economic growth. The WHO and UNICEF recommend that breastfeeding should commence one hour after delivery and be exclusively continued for the first six months of the child's life. After that point, safe, nutritional solid foods should be introduced alongside continual breastfeeding for the next two years of life and beyond that if possible. Early introduction of breastfeeding is crucial to the survival of newborn babies as breast milk provides adequate nutrition to enable proper physical and mental growth and also provides antibodies to boost the immune system and protect the infant from childhood ailments. Breastfeeding can reduce the chance of obesity and non-communicable diseases for both the child and the mother. Infants that breastfeed longer have a 13% risk reduction for obesity along with a lower risk for type 2 diabetes. Women who breastfeed have a reduced risk of postpartum obesity or weight gain, a 37% lower risk of ovarian cancer, 26% lower risk of breast cancer, and a 32% lower risk of type 2 diabetes. Many infants in Latin America and the Caribbean do not meet WHO and UNICEF recommendations for breastfeeding. Only 54% of infants initiate breastfeeding within one hour of birth, 37% breastfeed exclusively for the first six months, which is below the global rate of 44%, and between 31 to 55% of children continue to receive breast milk up to two years of age. Breastfeeding, more so when occurring exclusively, allows for healthier mothers and children who can in turn contribute meaningfully to the community and society at large. Regarding societal impact, there is a reduced tax burden on communities and governments to ensure children are properly fed. Additionally, more funding is made available for national development. This year's theme for World Breastfeeding Week, Step Up for Breastfeeding, Educate and Support, is aligned with WBW Sustainable Development Goals 2030 campaign. The campaign highlights the links between breastfeeding and good nutrition, food security, and reduction of inequalities. We'll be right back with more News Watch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providencialis, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. This story has so much valid information that we thought we'd run it again just in case you missed it. Giving us an overview on how to access health care in the TCI was the Minister of Health and Human Services, the Honorable Jamel Robinson. From this point onward, you're going to see more promotional material going out. You're going to see, I believe we'll probably do a forum where we get users of the system to ask questions of the professionals so they can have a better understanding because what we need and what we want for everybody to know prior to them being in an emergency situation how do they access health care in our country? The minister then provided a rundown of where the ministry is going with health care through the various phases, what is available, and what they're doing to improve what we already have. So in the first instance, in terms of emergency medical services, I would have said it before in my budget address, 
but we are going to source a new medical officer, i.e. a doctor, as well as an EMT supervisor and about six EMTs in this budget year. Many improvements are also to be made to primary health care, especially for our nurses. We're looking to improve and strengthen our nursing programs. We're going to have significant focus on fitness and wellness in terms of you would have seen us do the Let's Move program and you would have seen other events continuing in the Let's Move um, entities. We're also, this is Men's Health Month, so that's promoting men's health in terms of getting your checks for your prostate cancer, um, being aware of any non-communicable diseases that might impact you and your history and your family's history. We're also in the process in this particular budget, we're going to be scoping um, the improvements for a wellness center in North and Middle, as well as we're going to do a scoping exercise for two clinics, one in Grand Turk, one in Providentialis. So we want to give persons more options for primary health care access. In terms of secondary health care, the public wanted to know what are they doing, and so the minister answered. The hospitals, what are, what are they doing, from what I know? So they've approved, and I'm sure persons, if they're paying attention to the media that the hospital, TCI hospitals are putting out, the announcement would have been made about the MRI and the CT scan machines that are going to be procured and installed and implemented, um, hopefully within, well, Sometime. I wouldn't give a timeline. I'll allow um, Dr. Brafade or Dr. Perry Ewing to say the timelines, but that's a big thing. That's an improvement. Those are some of the things we have to send persons off to get checked, right? Because the quality of the imaging isn't where we would like it to be in some instances. So we're getting, I think we're going from what, a four slice to a 64 slice with the new machine? Four slice CT. Four slice CT? Oh. 128, even double the 64 that I thought we were getting. So that's a significant improvement. As we learned from the minister, the hospitals both in Providencialis and Grand Turk have extra space because with their inception, there was expansion room built in each facility. We have at least 20 rooms, so to speak, and extra space, essentially a whole entire floor where the hospital here and Grand Turk can be expended for the services we need. So we have to look at what we're going to use that for as a part of our scoping exercise. So again, those are some of the things that will help improve our secondary care on island. And maybe some of the tertiary care needs that we have now will be transferred to the local, um, local environment. So we don't have to send persons off. So those are things that we're doing to make sure we progress healthcare in the country. Stay tuned to hear how tertiary healthcare in the TCI works in your subsequent newscast. So many interesting stories have emerged this week, but here's another one that made this edition of The Real News. Monday, August 1st, citizens of the TCI celebrated the all-white affair in Kew, North Caicos, which is an event that commemorates the history of emancipation in the islands. To kick off the event, Miss Nicole Gardner greeted the persons who were in attendance. Honorable Musgrove, Honorable Royal Robinson, Lady D.C., distinguished guests, residents, good morning. Ms. Gardner then called on Pastor Rupert to assist in the singing of the national anthem and the national song. God save our gracious spring, long live our noble queen, God save The Honorable Arlington Musgrove was welcomed to the stage to deliver a few words. You know, when we used to come for Q in the summer, it was about seeing on the bureau. But one of the most exciting things is to see the Benevolent Association get together in March. The District Commissioner of North Caicos, Miss Sinclair Musgrove, presented an original poem piece that she wrote named First of August Memories. This is a, a poem that I wrote um, Saturday morning 
So, I think it's fitting for the occasion. First of all, this memories. Come, take a walk or a stroll with me. We'll cruise down memory lane. This street has been closed for decades. Only relics and recollections remain. Miss Deidre Jennings was given a special mention due to her being attired in full regalia, which was worn back in the day. I want to make special recognition of Miss Deidre Jennings. Yes. Okay. Miss Deidre is the icon for today's event. Miss Deidre is actually dressed like those people back in the day, how they used to dress when they turn out for, for, for their benevolent event. The featured address was given by Mr. Prince Selva. Growing up here in Cuba, this place was the center. We talk about the House of Assembly and Grand Turk, Executive Council. It was done here in this building. After Mr. Selva's speech, a prayer of freedom was delivered by male students. Don't move just yet. Coming up next is your weather forecast after this break. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providence Charlies, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV! We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Welcome back to Newswatch. Here's the latest in your weather forecast. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk, partly cloudy skies, high 84, low 80, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For South Caicos, partly cloudy skies, high 84, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos, Partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 80, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For Parrot and Pine Key, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. And on Providencialis, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. Here's your sunrise and sunset. Sunrise, 6.26 a.m. Sunset, 7.25 p.m. Now for your high and low tides. High tides, 
5.36 a.m., 6.13 p.m., low tides, 11.39 a.m., 11.39 p.m. And for your hurricane outlook, for the North Atlantic Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms over the far eastern tropical Atlantic south of the Cabo Verde Islands is associated with a tropical wave. Environmental conditions appear generally conducive for gradual development of this system while it moves westward to west-northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic, and a tropical depression could form around the middle to latter part of this week. And that's it for your weather forecast and hurricane outlook. That's the end of today's edition of Newswatch. But don't forget, you can catch us on our website at www.ptv8pci.com and every weekday right here at 6.30 p.m. I'm Khalees Williams. Stay informed. Thanks for watching.